I'm ready. Okay, hit it. You make it and we shoot it. Let's see if these will work or not. Today we have a viewer submitted shotgun slug design made out of Delrin with a carbide pointed penetrator on it. <laughs> That's wicked. And these were designed and fabricated by Ryan Bond. Yeah, the guy that sent us the Gauge Mate uh, chamber adapters. And like many people who submit stuff to us, they're not aerodynamic or ballistic experts, and they base their designs off of what worked on other designs. So we could see that Ryan's design is based off the Diablo shape, the kind of that classic pellet gun shape, but it also has a very long tapered nose. And at the very tip we have the heavy carbide penetrator, which is about 10 millimeters in length, and that'll help bring the center of gravity much more forward. But the slugs are relatively light in weight, coming in at only 10.5 grams. Ryan designed these so that they would fit into the shot cup of a federal wad, and with that combination, it's the perfect diameter to shoot through a rifled barrel. So that's what we're going to shoot these through. So let's see how Ryan's design does out on the test range. Special ballistic tip for uh, aerodynamics, <laughs> made of a very hard metal. Let's see how this one works using Danny's rifled shotgun. That was wimpy. Oh, it's got to be, it only weighs 10 grams. All right, let's try this again. So you're aiming here I and it hit. I was aiming here and it hit here, but there is the metal tip stuck in there. Quarter inch. Yeah, a little bulge in the back. Old. Okay. Yeah, those could have been a lot hotter. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, room for improvement. <laughs> I think we made the right choice shooting these through a rifle barrel to give it that gyroscopic stability. Without that, I'm sure these would have flown sideways. But we still had a little bit of a wobble with this slug, and little things like that account for inaccuracy, even at only 10 yards. This one's going to be out of a federal shell. I think Jeff just pulled the bird shot out and uh, stuck this slug in there. So Yeah, that's it. See what see how that performs. That's set up for one and an eighth ounce, so it ought to push it a little harder this time. Maybe a little bit, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well the sticker's gone, that's a good sign. Where'd that one hit? Yeah, the sticker was right about here. This one hit a little bit low right. That's a fresh hole there. Doggone it, man. That thing went all the way through. Nice! Okay, so full fit. penetration, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, just the tip. <laughs> just the tip, though. Yeah. <laughs> While it looked like a success, it was actually a failure. The carbide core got knocked loose from the rest of the slug, something we call the Newton's Cradle Effect. And it was just sheer luck that the carbide core, as it was tumbling, happened to hit straight on and penetrated the plate anyway. And if that core had hit sideways, it probably would have just shattered and just left a dent in the plate. Okay, now an AR-500 plate. This one, I believe, has 25 grains of tight wad powder in it. Aiming at that little orange sticker. I am ready when you are. That one had a very good thump to it. Yeah. Okay, they're not very accurate, but they are relatively stable in flight, it looks like. That's an AR-500 plate this time. Um, normally a bullet will just uh, splatter against it and not even hardly dent it. So. Where did it hit? Well, my point of aim is the other two shots were hitting a little bit low right. Uh, so I went a little bit high left, right about here. And that one hit clear down here. Okay. 
and uh, not sure if that tip is in there or not. It kind of looks like it. It's hard to tell. Yeah. But there's the slightest little bulge right there. Okay, that's pretty good for a 12 gauge. <laughs> not bad for a 12 gauge. Well, this one held together. It had relatively good stability, just didn't have enough uh, oomph behind it to drive it through that AR500 plate. I think people get upset if we didn't shoot the lead plate. Get it loaded? Got it loaded. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see if the, these things will go through the lead plate. I, I doubt it, but you never know, man. Okay, are you about ready? I think I'm ready. Okay, hit it. Here's the piece that came flying back. Okay, that was upside down, right? Uh, I'm not sure which way you had it. You that said was it the bottom, it yeah, it was at six o'clock. Right. So, so it's a pretty good sized dent for a plastic slug. We had it right in here. Exactly like that, yeah. Okay. Well, I can tell you that one went all the way through. It went all the way through the lead plate. Just the tip, baby. And then. Look at here. Is that a. There it is. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. Into the mild steel after going through an inch and a half of lead. Not the most accurate slug, but he hit it at about 10 yards. <laughs> Didn't hit the table, luckily. We hit the, hit our fixture there. Just barely cleared that first angle iron right there. Yeah. That it must have been something else then. Yeah, it's kind of an old one. This is fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Little pieces. Not bad. Not bad. Pieces of lead. <laughs> that was something else. Yeah. Did not expect that. Now this gives you an idea why it shot so low. Having that real heavy tungsten weight way out there in the front made the slug want to just drive itself into the ground. That's just, that's not normal uh, bullet drop there, folks. And it's very possible that had we shot the AR500 play with this, it would have penetrated that. But overall, this one performed very well, just wasn't very accurate. Okay, this one does not have a penetrator tip, but it has, uh, I think, three BBs in there. Uh, still loaded rather hot, 24 grains of tight wad, I believe. Let's see if that one does. It, I think the tip might have fallen out or something, I don't know. Or he just sent, one, he didn't have enough tip for fifth one. Okay, last shot, BB slug. Hopefully they don't bounce back at us. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. That one wasn't very loud. No. That one shot high. This one was at the bottom when I aimed at the center, it hit low. <laughs> Look at this, it walked up on it and that BB was laying there. Huh. That one didn't have as much of a boom yeah. as the others, you know, it sounded a little weak. But hey, you hit it though, you know, that's 99% of the effort there. That's skookum enough. Yeah. <laughs> now this one actually flew rather flat, it didn't nosedive like the previous shot. He was expecting it to shoot low, so he aimed towards the top of the plate. So this was the most accurate slug, but it had the least amount of damage. It's time for the bonus shot. This exotic slug was sent to us by Matt. Thank you, Matt. Bonus round time. Almost forgot. Ammo zone pit bull. So we got a, a lineman pellet shaped slug. It looks like six buckshots in there. Through a uh, smooth bore with a modified choke. And we'll be shooting at a propane cylinder. We'll try this at home, kids. Okay, I am. Oh, not ready. 
<laughs> okay, I'm ready now. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, that was cool. That thing spun like a ground bloom flower. Cool. All right, let's see how the pit bull performed. As you can see, the Lyman slug is kind of yawn all over the place. It's, uh, I think it's been damaged by all the other, the buckshot slamming into the base of it, kind of screwing up its aerodynamic. It's it's trying to to right itself, but it ultimately it completely misses our propane cylinder. And it's kind of proof that too much of a good thing isn't always better. We have a few more of these exotic commercially loaded shotgun rounds that Matt sent us and we'll keep featuring them as bonus rounds. The pit bull. The pit bull. Look at there's still a piece of buckshot stuck in there. Went a little bit high from where I was aiming but it's a lighter load than a slug. Yeah. One pass through and uh, three good sized dimples there. There was some uh, stuck in there, but they fell out when I was walking back. Oh, okay. But, I believe you. Yeah, we couldn't put a flame next to that because, man, we'd end up burning this whole area out. Yeah, uh, California burning as it is. We don't need to add to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was kind of nice. Yeah, neat sound, oh, man. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> the pit bull, ladies and gentlemen. Goes for the throat. Yeah. I'd like to take this minute to thank our latest Patreon supporters. There's many more. If we listed them all, this thing, it would last about five minutes. But anyway, uh, without these folks, uh, we couldn't have survived this long. We would have had to put all our camera equipment and everything on eBay and sold it off probably a year ago and given up. We used to be able to just run this channel just off of ad revenue, just those annoying ads. But because people started using ad blockers much more and because of ad apocalypse and all that stuff, uh, <laughs> it's just impossible to run a YouTube channel just off of ad revenue. Anyway, thank you everyone.